I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about forfeiting your freedom is the title of the lesson. I want to read 2 Timothy 4 and 3 and then 2 Timothy 2 15 but 4 and 3 says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers. And then 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. We've got to be careful about who we listen to. You know, you can be influenced by people that you listen to. You can be influenced by them to, and, and it can guide you the, the wrong direction. As a United States citizen, we enjoy the blessings of freedom, but freedom can be lost. We have found out this last year that some of the freedoms we thought we always had, we had to change some of those. I mean, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have changed them, but things have, <laughs> have changed. I was talking to someone the other day, they went on vacation uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they went to uh, Cabo San Lucas, <coughs> Mexico. <laughs> They said they had to take a COVID test before they could actually fly back into the United States. Things are changing. Life is changing for us. Uh, religious freedom, though, for the last 30 years or so has been under attack. Sometimes you, you look at things and maybe you can't pray at a graduation. Maybe you don't pray at a football game. Uh, there's problems with you witnessing on the job. There's sometimes there, there's been cases of where you couldn't carry a Bible or wear a Christian t-shirt in some places. But if we continue on going down the path the way that we're going, then we're going to keep on and we're going to forfeit our freedom. And, and you may be sitting there saying, no, Ronnie, you're crazy. This is not, not going to happen. This is the United States of America. This is the home of the free. This is the home of the brave. This is, you know, you're, you're getting this way out of proportion. But in my lifetime of 61 years, I have seen prayer removed from public schools. I've seen this happen, and if it keeps on continuing on, then it will, will keep on going. They can hand out uh, birth control things into schools, but they don't want to basically let you have prayer in the Bible in the schools. Now, the, the students themselves can still do this, they, they pump the pornography into the school libraries via the web. There's, you've got to have metal detectors almost at the door now at some schools because of some of the things that are being carried in. The only time we pray in schools now is, is because some, a student has been gunned down in the halls or something like this, and then we go back and we, we turn to it. Abortion was legalized in this society since I have been alive. Uh, I don't think that the Declaration of Independence would have would have been too much for that. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal or endowed with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whenever you start looking at this and you start looking at the things that are going on in America today, we're going in a bad direction. Amen. You know that there's there's a lot of different estimates on, on children that are aborted, but there's some people that estimated it being over a million a year in the United States alone. I mean, you start looking at this and this is this is what, what happens. Now they're getting into the partial birth abortions now. They, they're trying to get that more and more approved. Uh, eventually, they, they there's already, I guess you say, emphasized but they're, they're even wanting to push a little bit more for, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but senicide was basically the killing of the elderly and the handicapped is what, what they're, they're looking at here. They're doing these things and what they think is right. They're trying to what they think is make society better. But whenever you look at it from a Christian standpoint, we've got to stand up against these things. Christians are no longer respected in many segments of our society. We've been dubbed the religious right. We've been called conservatives. Uh, I am, I guess, religious right, and I am conservative. That, that, that is me. 
but we've been painted as mean-spirited and we've been painted as bigots is what small-minded bigots is what we've been we've, we've been told we are the religious convictions are respected if you're a Jew or a Muslim but if you're a conservative Christian you're prejudiced because of your beliefs and that's where we're getting to the point of that we're looking at that they're putting us down on a regular basis I want you to understand something I believe we're in a critical stage in America history Amen. we have a chance that we can turn things around if we don't do something though, then what's going to happen is, is we're going to be headed for disaster. I'm going to tie this into a Christian side here in just a second. I'm looking at, at both ways here as far as our rights as a citizen, but also our rights as a Christian. You look at the power brokers up on Capitol Hill and the things that they do and, and they they slip things under the table and they make decisions that that really do not represent the wishes of the majority. Good people who know better aren't showing up sometimes, though, to make a difference at some of the polls and the uh, maybe at the county council meetings, the city council meetings, and and when at the school board meetings or whatever they are, they're not involved in the political process. Sometimes we're not even informed about what things are going on. We're apathetic, or we're discouraged, or we're just too busy to be able to get into things. And that's where I want to try to talk to you about this morning. But are you aware of the symptoms that can rob you of your freedom both as an American system, citizen and as a spiritual being with an eternal soul? Just understand that you can be robbed of those too. And that some of the things, I want to mention just a few things to you. If, you're not in, if, if, if you are unsure of what you believe, do you know what you believe? Do you know what you believe when it comes to America, but do you also know what you believe when it comes to the Bible? If you don't know what you believe, then what will happen is, is you will mess around and you'll fall for something else. But the first step in forfeiting your freedom is, is you don't know what you believe and why. Then you'll believe things that you were told by, the, by people that know what they believe. They know what they believe. It may be wrong, but they know what they believe. And what they'll do is they'll convince you. It is so important today as Christians that we have got to be founded in the Word of God. You've got to read the Word of God. You cannot get by without that. You have got to get this in your, in your mind. Amen. It's happening in America today, though, and if we're not careful, then what's going to happen is we're going to lose everything that we have. If you don't know what you believe, you'll believe things that you are told by those who know what they believe. I just said that even if they're wrong. But if you believe all the politically correct garbage coming out of Washington and Hollywood and the other places around where the liberal thinking without checking the facts and shame on you, you need to check and make sure. And, and I know sometimes in the past, I've seen things where people would put something on Facebook. And then what I would do is I would, before I would really believe it, I would do a fact check on it. And I found out that it was there was no truth to it. And they were just trying to get people like me riled up, you know, with the things that they were doing. I'm okay with you getting me riled up, but tell me the truth. And that, that's the way it needs to be, is we need to know the truth whenever it comes to us. Your belief determines your action, and your action determines your results, but first you have to believe. Mark Victor Hansen said that. It's the same spiritually. If you don't know what you believe, you'll believe things that you were told by people. As I was reading there a little while ago, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 says, For the time will come when men will put up with sound doctrine, will not put up with sound doctrine, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. And we need to understand that, that we have got to know the truth ourselves so that what we do is, is whenever, if I'm up here teaching you, you know what I'm going to tell you? I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. But you need to be founded in the Word yourself so that if I do tell you something wrong, then you know about it. You know what every false teacher out there is going to tell you? I'm not going to mislead you. I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. What I want you to do is, is I want you to know the Bible better than I do. And then whenever I say something wrong or I'm off, off course with something, I want you to talk to me. Let's, let's, let's get this thing going here. Um, 
1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. You need to understand why you believe what you believe. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 and 12 says, I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Who told you that you could make it to heaven without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? That's what they're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell our, our, our young people this. They're trying to tell them that you don't need a personal relationship. Please. Who told you that as long as you're a good person, you're okay and you're going to heaven? They're, they're trying to sell that. They're trying to sell it out there. What makes you believe that practicing your religion makes you righteous in the sight of a holy God? There are religions out there that believe that they work. I saw somebody the other day that was out on the side of the road and they had a sign they were holding up. And whenever I got looking at what this person was representing, they felt like they had to do that to be able to make it to heaven. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you standing out on the side of the road, but they thought it was part of the works that they needed to do to be able to make it to heaven. You've got to be careful about what you do. Who told you that hell is an old-fashioned idea, not a real place? Are you asking the right questions of the right person? Are you looking in the right places for the answers that will determine your eternity? And, and I want to ask you, if we died right now, do we know that we're ready to meet God? I believe that we do. But what I'm telling you is, is you can't just believe what someone is telling you. Amen. Second thing is, is being intimidated by the opposition. Now, do you ever feel intimidated by anybody? Maybe sometimes you don't have the courage or the convictions to be able to stand up for what you believe. You, maybe whenever your opposing viewpoint will, or their opposing viewpoints will intimidate you into silence. This is the second stage of forfeiting your freedom. It's no longer about who is right, it's the one that is the loudest. As long as you've got somebody that's loud enough, and what they feel like is, is they feel like what they can do is they can put you back in your place. I've had people try to do that before you. Uh, I had a conversation a while back with a, with a lady. And this wasn't anything to do with the Bible, but what she was doing was that she was hollering. And she was just hollering. And every time I would try to answer her question, so finally I just asked her, I said, let me ask you this. Do you want to just scream at me or do you really want me to answer your question?" I'm willing to do that, but I can't, I can't do it if you're, you're going to scream at me. But it's about that same way with, with biblical things today. What happens is, is they're not listening to you whenever you're talking to them. What they're doing is they're trying to come up with the next thing they're going to say. And they're not really, not really listening there. But you need to make sure that don't just get, you need to know what your opinion is. Don't have my watch on this morning. I, I couldn't fasten it on, so I, 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 I want to look at my watch. I don't know if any of you ever do that or not, but uh, <coughs> I want to ask you, how many of us believe in God? How many of us believe that God approves of abortion? And I know that we don't believe that he does. And now if you believe in God and you firmly believe God is opposed to abortion, what are we doing to stop it? Are we, are we praying the way we need to do? Are we standing up for the things that is? I'm telling you that it's wrong that, that what they're doing. I'm going to move on. Romans 1.16. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Ephesians 6, 19 through 20 says, Pray for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And Acts 19, 8 says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lectern hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Have you been intimidated into silence is what I'm asking you. Don't let that happen to you. When was the last time that you told someone about Jesus? 
If I had to ask you that today, and you had to think back, I don't want you to raise your hand, I don't want you to say anything, but would it be yesterday? Would it be the last week? Would it be the last month? Maybe even the last year? I want to ask you, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are the things that you believe worth sharing, even if it brings you personal criticism? And we need to make sure that what we do is, is we keep standing up for what we believe. Yeah. I'm going to skip on here. In 2 Chronicles 36, well, if you, were, if you look back in the Old Testament with, and you can look in First and Second Kings, and you can look in First and Second Chronicles, what happened was is they would become enslaved by some oppressive forces. And whenever you say, what are you talking about? What they would do is they would have some kings. And some of those kings were good. In Second Chronicles 33, it says, Manasseh became king, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And then in 34, it says Josiah became king. He did what was right. You, you will say that they did that. Then 36, Jeho Jehoiakim became king. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. And Je Jehoiachin became king. He did evil. Then Zedekiah, he did evil. And what you see is, is that what they had is they had a lot of leadership that, that led them down the wrong way. And what they did, whenever they did this, then God would punish them and they would get themselves straightened out. And then what they would do is they would come back. But what happened after some ungodly kings had led them down the wrong path, then what happened is, is God let them become slaves. And after he become, let them become slaves, then what happened from there was, is they, they turned and they came back to God. What I want to ask you today is, is could this happen in America? We've had some, I don't, we don't have kings, but we have presidents, we have leadership, and whenever they're leading us the wrong way, then what will happen is, is we will start getting to the point of that we are being misled. I want to apologize to you, but I am going to go ahead and stop. I'm gonna tell you, I want you to pray for me. My, my hand is killing me. I, I can't, I can't concentrate. What I do want you to understand though today, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop with this. And again, I'll, I apologize. Sorry. But it, it is just, it, it, it's just an aching. I, I can't think of anything but my hand right now. But what I want you to understand today is, if you're not careful, then what you'll do is, is you will forfeit your freedom. You will end up letting someone take that away from you. It could be the leadership, the government, but it can also be other things as well. But what will happen is, is if you're not careful, then your freedom as a Christian will be taken away from you. It's so important for us as Christians to know what we believe. It's so important for us as Christians to stand up for what we believe. It's so important for us as Christians to go out and spread the gospel. That is what we have got to do. It is, it is important that we do that on a day-to-day -day basis, you have got to do that. With that, I'm going to stop and I'm going to pray for you. And I ask that y'all just pray for me. Like I said, I, I can't, I can't think about anything but my hand right now. It's just, it's just killing me. Father, we love you. Father, I know that I may have botched this a little bit, but there's a message here, and I ask that you would take this and that you would drive it home to your people, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for the Christians that are here today. I thank you for the lives that they live. I thank you for the way that they represent you. I thank you for the way that they live for you. And I ask, Lord, that you would help us. Help us to be better Christians. Help us to not give up our freedoms. Help us to, to go out and spread the word and help us to go out and win the lost. Lord, I just ask now that you would be with us as we go from here. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming to Sunday School. And again.